Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, I am filming in a different location today. I'm actually in my guest bedroom and I thought we would do an old school drugstore haul. I was at CVS a little while ago and I saw some new products and I just decided, you know what, let me just grab these and also a couple of other things that I hadn't ever tried before and just do a full face and we'll do it old school style. Also, welcome to anybody who is new and if you enjoy this video, I hope you will consider hitting the subscribe button. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Alright guys, I'm back. So I basically got enough to do a full face. I got some of the new products you probably can't even see in here, but I got a couple of new Revlon eyeshadow palettes. I got a new mascara from CoverGirl. Um, I got a CoverGirl foundation that was recommended to me by one of you guys a couple weeks ago, and I've really been wanting to try it out. I also got those new Revlon lip crayons that look kind of like the Maybelline um, Superstay ones. So very, very interested to test all this out. So let's go ahead and head home and we'll try this on. All right guys, so I'm back. I just took a quick shower and I'm ready to apply everything. So I have all the products laid out in front of me and I didn't open anything. I didn't swatch anything. So we're gonna do all of that together. And I think I'm gonna start with the eyeshadow palettes first because whatever eye look I do is gonna then depend like what blush I pick, what lip color. So first up we have these Revlon Color Stay Day to Night Quads. And these say that they're a new and improved formula. I gave up on Revlon eyeshadows a long time ago because they were always just not up to par, especially when there's brands like Essence that's so affordable and so good and lots of other drugstore brands, even ColourPop is more affordable. Actually, let me take a look at my receipt really quick and see how much these were. So these eyeshadow quads were $10.29 each, so definitely not cheap. Essence has those little six pans for like three or four bucks. So we're gonna see if this formula is actually worth it. So I got two different shades. The first one is called Decadent. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So here's Decadent first. This one is just a really neutral color story. And then the other one that I got, which I think is really beautiful, is Exquisite. So this one kind of has like your plummy purples going on and I really like the look of this one. So I'm gonna try to use this one if I can. I might pull a shade or two from the Decadent palette if I feel like I need something a little bit lighter, but I feel like this has pretty much everything that I would need. So let me just swatch these for you guys really quick and we'll kind of get an idea of what the formula is like and what the finish is like. So the decadent one actually doesn't look like it has any mattes in it. It only has either shimmers or satins, but wow, I'm liking the pigmentation on these. They kind of have like that really silky feel, kind of like the CoverGirl True Naked eyeshadows. Okay, so just some quick hand swatches. I do really think these were super smooth and really, really pigmented. So I actually have some hope for these. So this one looks like it actually has two shimmer shades and two mattes, which is really cool. Okay, so this one is so pretty. I think I'm definitely gonna be using this one. You can see just how smooth the shimmer shades are. They're really nice and shiny, but they're not glittery at all. They're just really smooth. And look at the pigmentation on the mattes. I'm hoping that these blend well. Okay, so let's do a purple eye look and I'm gonna start with my BK Beauty 201 brush and I'm gonna put it into this lightest matte shade right here. All right, so let's try this out. definitely showing up pretty nicely. And this is kind of like a dusty purple. It's not really bright. It's almost grayish when you blend it out. I don't feel like it comes across as super purpley. But so far it's definitely applying to the eyes really easily. I feel like it's gripping nicely. It's not blending away. 
I'm just going to take a clean brush. This is my Sigma diffused crease and I'm just going to blend this out a little bit and just get rid of any harsh edges. Next, I'm going to take my Sigma detail blending brush and I'm going to pick up this really deep eggplant shade right here. This is another matte and I'm going to apply this one to my outer corner. So this is showing up pretty well. I don't think it's overly pigmented, which for me is a good thing because I have a hard time blending out really pigmented eyeshadows. So I like that this is a little bit more subtle and I could always build it up if I have to. I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm really hoping that these are long lasting too because I know like the CoverGirl ones that have this really silky formula they tend to wear off on my eyes pretty quickly. I'm just gonna take my Sigma E25 blending brush. This is a clean brush and I'm just gonna go over this a little bit and blend it out. But yeah, I'm just hoping for the best. I'm rooting for Revlon to come back because I feel like in the olden days, they were such a good brand. I loved all their products and then they just seem to be kind of, I don't know, like lost behind the times. Is that the right expression? They were just behind the times, I guess. They didn't, Evolve and a lot of other brands, especially when it came to eyeshadows, really kind of just jumped ahead of them in leaps and bounds and they were kind of left behind. But I do like, I really love their highlighters. I think their primers are pretty good. So yeah, I definitely like to see them come back a little bit. All right, so I think that's blended out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this deeper shade and I'm just gonna put this one kind of towards the outer edge of my lid and then I'm gonna use the lighter shimmer shade on the inner corner. So I'm just gonna put this a little bit like right about here. I love this orchid color. This is so pretty. Okay, so that went on really nicely. This is super smooth. I don't think it's gonna be something super metallic or really like foiled on the eyes, but it does have a little bit of a sheen. So I think it'll be good for like textured eyelids or if you just don't like a lot of sparkle. All right, so now I'm just gonna pick up the lighter shimmer shade and I'm gonna put this in the inner corner and just blend it back into the one that I just put down. Okay, so my eyes are mostly done. I'm gonna wait to do mascara and my lower lash line until I do my concealer and foundation. So for foundation, I picked up the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless 3-in-1 Foundation. I've actually never tried this before. I tried the one in the compact and I really wasn't a fan of it, um, but so many of you guys told me to get this and somebody really recently said it was like your holy grail. You've been using it for so many years. I remember Jessica Braun really liking this as well and I believe she has dry skin like I do. So I'm excited to test this out and I'm gonna be using the shade Buff Beige. It almost has kind of like a moussey texture. And I'm gonna be applying this with my Sigma Flat Kabuki brush. I think I'm just gonna dab this. Oh, this looks kind of yellow. It's so hard to tell what shade you're getting in the store. I didn't want like the lightest, lightest shade, but ones that were higher than this looked a little bit too dark, so. I don't know. I feel like the drugstore doesn't have the best range of undertones. Okay, so this has definitely like a bit of a perfumey scent to it. It's not bad, but I just wanted to mention that. It's blending out really beautifully though. And so far, I don't feel like it looks dry. It doesn't seem to be clinging to like dry patches or anything. And in natural lighting, I can really definitely see what this looks like. Usually when I'm in my makeup room and I'm in my studio lights, I feel like everything looks nice in there. And then I go outside and I'm like, oh my God. Sometimes, not always. But in here, I can definitely see everything the way that I would outside. This has really, really nice coverage. I wasn't expecting that because it feels very lightweight. And the shade honestly isn't so, so bad. I'm just gonna blend it down my neck a little bit. It doesn't have full, full coverage. I would say it's medium. Um, it took away my redness for sure. It evened out everything. I do still see my sunspots peeking through though, so it's not like a completely full coverage, but I do think the coverage is 
a lot better than I was expecting it to be. And at least in my mirror, it looks totally seamless. So let me go ahead and just do a really quick close up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so the next product is a new concealer from Revlon. This is called Color Stay Skin Awaken with caffeine and vitamin C. It has the little 24 hour symbol on here. Actually, so did the eyeshadow. So I guess they're supposed to be really long lasting. Um, let's see, on the back it says five in one concealer, erase, perfect, brighten, hydrate, and refresh. And I got mine in the shade Fair, which is 05. They also did have like um, a brightener shade that was more pink, and then they had kind of a peachy toned one, I guess, for correction. But other than those two, this was actually the lightest shade. And it comes with this little like spongy tip applicator. So let me just show you guys what the color looks like really quick. So that's just a quick close up of the shade Fair. All right, so I'm just going to put this kind of in the corner of my eye over here. I don't like to put concealer all the way under just because I feel like it's too much. It tends to settle into like fine lines and wrinkles and it just starts to look really cakey because that's like where my wrinkles are is right here. So I try not to put any concealer on my wrinkles if I can help it. I like to put it on the outside here just to brighten that up and kind of add a little bit of lift. And then I usually do it like on the inner corner right here and just kind of pat that in with my finger. That's kind of where there's a dark shadow right there. So this has a really liquidy texture. It's blending in effortlessly. I hardly had to touch it at all and it just like melted into my skin and it looks really, really good. So what do you guys think? I see a big difference from this side to this side. I feel like this one looks so much brighter and my skin underneath looks so smooth. So again, let me give you guys a quick close up and you can see what that looks like. I definitely think this looks so smooth, so skin-like and I am really, really impressed so far. I hope that it lives up to its claims and does last not 24 hours, obviously. I'm never gonna wear it for that long, but I do hope it at least lasts the day. And we're definitely gonna do a wear test on all of these just because they do claim to be long wearing between the eyeshadow and this. So I'm really curious to see like what everything looks like at the end of the day. The only thing is I'm not gonna be able to do like a full, full day just because I am using the natural light and it gets really dark around five o'clock now. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to maybe come back around four. It's currently like nine o'clock in the morning. So I feel like we're not gonna get a full day out of it. We'll get maybe like seven hours. But I can also update you guys in the description box and let you know how everything wore. All right, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little tiny bit of this around my nose. I just love how this is blending in, even without a sponge, just with my fingers. It's completely like undetectable on your skin. I'm loving this. I'm just gonna cover a couple of my dark spots over here, just some of the more prominent ones. Okay, so next up we have a new mascara from CoverGirl. This is the Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen Mascara. So it says it's a lash strengthening formula that protects against breakage and it gives you a lash extension effect. It says the wavy bristled Christmas tree shaped brush allows the mascara to reach every lash from root to tip for longer, thicker, and more defined lashes. Let me just show you guys the brush really quick. And that's what it looks like. So it's a smaller brush. It's pretty much like straight up and down. I don't know. I don't really see like a Christmas tree shape. It's maybe just slightly wider at the base, but not really. I wouldn't say it's like, you know, a very obvious Christmas tree shape. I don't know. Anyway, so let's just do this one eye and then we'll do a comparison between the two. I do like that this is a nice small brush because I feel like I'm not gonna get it all over my eyelids. This formula is also not really dry, but it's not wet either. I feel like it's a pretty good in-between and it's not clumpy either. It's actually fluffing out my lashes really nicely. So here's a look at one eye versus the other. I mean, wow, this is actually really, really good. I feel like it's making my lashes look really big, very voluminous, also some length. I wouldn't say it's like the longest length mascara in the world, but I think it definitely gives like that really kind of fanned out, fluffed out look, which is really, really nice. I am liking this so far. All right, let's do the other eye. I'm also hoping that this doesn't smudge or flake under my eyes, so I'll definitely let you guys know that at the end of the video as well. I feel like that's kind of a deal breaker for me when it comes to mascara. If it smudges under my eyes, no matter how good my lashes look, I won't wear it because 
there's been way too many times when I like went out in public after applying mascara and then I didn't realize it until I got home that I just had like all this dark stuff under my eyes. <laughs> all right, so, so far I am definitely impressed by this mascara. It feels a little bit heavy on my lashes, so I'm wondering if it's going to like kind of drag them down over the course of the day. Right now they're nice and curled up, but we will see. So again, I'll let you guys know. Next up for blush, I got two shades of the NYX Sweet Cheeks Matte Blush. I have tried the liquid version and I really love it, but I have never tried this one before. And so many people have told me how great these are. So I got two different shades. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be doing like more of a warm look or a cool look, or if it was gonna be more peachy, more pink. So I got a pink shade called Bang Bang and the peachy shade is Summer Breeze. So I think I'm gonna go with the pink shade just because of my eye look, but um, I do wanna swatch them both for you guys. So. So let me just get them open and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's what the outer packaging looks like. On the back of the box it says, this creamy smooth powder gives your cheeks a gorgeous blush of vibrant color with a matte finish. So I'm gonna swatch these both on my hand. Ooh, they do have a really nice like silky feel. And they apply really beautifully too. Like they're just, they feel like silk. Some blushes I feel like they kind of almost have like um, a chalky feel and these are just ultra smooth. Here's a close up of the shade Summer Breeze. And then here's a close up of Bang Bang. And then here's both of them swatched. We have Bang Bang right here and then Summer Breeze over there. All right, so taking my Flower Beauty blush brush, this is the best blush brush ever. I'm gonna go into Bang Bang. Even though the color looked kind of deep in the pan, it's not going on like that at all. I feel like it's shearing out really beautifully. I might actually even need to pick up some more. I went really lightly with it just because I was afraid of overdoing it because of how dark the color looked, but it really, it's like impossible to mess up. On a side note, this is kind of why I don't film in natural lighting because the sun is starting to move over and I feel like this side of my face is much more lit up than this side. <laughs> So it just makes things a little bit more uneven. So if you guys wanna really be able to see the makeup application evenly from one side to the other, I feel like it's harder to do that way, but. Okay, so that is just a really gorgeous, subtle blush. And like I said, pretty much impossible to mess up. I went back in a few times just to apply a little bit more. I always do because on camera, it doesn't always show up unless you put on a lot more than you would in real life. Um, so I think in real life, probably I wouldn't go back and forth so many times, but yeah, if you just want something that's gonna be really subtle or like very buildable, this is really nice and it just looks absolutely seamless. It doesn't look powdery at all. Okay, so last but not least, Revlon has these new matte light crayons. So they came in tons of different shades and they reminded me of the Maybelline Superstay crayons, which I love so much. So I was excited to see how these compare to those and if they're similar. So I got two colors, again, just not knowing what kind of a look I was gonna do. So the first color is Take Flight, which is more of a pink. And then the other one is Tread Lightly, which is more peachy. So let me just swatch these for you guys really quick. Oh, they actually look just like the Maybelline crayons here. Let me show you what they look like up close. They have like the same kind of point. Oh my gosh, and they have literally the exact same fragrance. It kind of smells like, I don't know, like a cupcake or cookie dough or something. It smells really good, but it's not just like a generic vanilla. It's exactly the same as the Superstay. I feel like we definitely have a dupe here or probably not a dupe because I'm sure they're the same, if not more in terms of price. Revlon can be kind of expensive. But I suppose if you like the Maybelline ones, then this would just give you more color options. So here are the two colors again. We have Take Flight up here, which is the pink, and then Tread Lightly, which is the peachy one. All right, so let's try it on and see if it really is like the same formula as the Maybelline. It kind of sounded like it in the um, on the display. It said that these were supposed to be like super, super lightweight. And that's the one thing I love about the Maybelline ones is that you can't really feel them on your lips at all. And I really love crayons too because I feel like you can kind of line your lips at the same time and you can get kind of like more of a precise edge. Oh my gosh, yeah. It feels just like the Maybelline. So yes, we definitely have a dupe here. Let me see how much these cost. I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head what the Maybelline ones cost, but 
Let's see, these were $12.49. I'm pretty sure the Maybelline ones are cheaper than that because they usually are pretty affordable as a brand. But anyway, here's what the color looks like. I think everything coordinates pretty well. It's always hard to tell at the drugstore when you can't really swatch anything and tell exactly what the color is gonna be. But overall, I liked so many things today. I felt like this foundation looks really nice on me. The concealer, oh my gosh. This is gonna be amazing. I have a feeling that I'm really gonna love this. I'm just praying that it doesn't settle into fine lines, but so far it still looks really good. I applied it now like a little while ago. It still looks really nice. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Um, the blushes, you guys were not kidding. These are just so soft and pretty. Impressed with the CoverGirl mascara so far. And also, I mean, the eyeshadow palettes, while I don't feel like they're super exciting, they don't have like a really nice foiled kind of metallic looking finish that I normally go for. I still feel like they applied nicely and the quality seems good. So, uh, you know, they're better than what Revlon's come out with previously. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead about the rest of my day and I will check in with you guys a little bit later and we'll see how everything held up. Hey guys, it's about 2.30 and I am just picking up my son from school, but I wanted to do a quick check-in and show you guys how the makeup is wearing. So the lipstick is gone because I ate lunch in between and it's been quite a few hours now. Um, but I did think it held on for quite a while. I would say it's similar to the Maybelline Superstay lipsticks. It lasted for, I wanna say it lasted maybe like two hours, but then I was eating and it wore off really quickly when I was eating and like obviously using a napkin and stuff like that. So. Um, I wouldn't say that the lipsticks are necessarily super long-lasting, but at the same time I don't think it really claimed to be either. Um, as far as the eyeshadows go though, those did have that little 24-hour symbol on them, and I've noticed quite a bit of fading since I first applied them. Let me just show you guys up close. I mean, it's still there but definitely not quite as vibrant as it was when I first applied it. The blush I could still see, that was very subtle to begin with, so I don't expect that to look like super bright. It looks about the same as it did before, so I don't feel like that faded. The mascara still looks really, really good. There's no smudging or anything, so that's holding up really nicely. And then um, the concealer as well. I can just show you guys up close. Like, I don't really see it settling into fine lines, and it looks like nothing. Like, I don't see that makeup y look underneath my eyes at all. I feel like it just looks very natural. And then, as far as the foundation goes as well, I think it just looks really natural. It's not clinging to dry patches. It's not grabbing at my chin where it usually does. It's wearing off a little bit on my nose. I feel like I see just a little bit of redness poking through, but otherwise, I feel like that foundation it looks really, really nice, especially on drier skin and you know more mature skin. So I'll do another check-in around 4, 4.30, so like maybe two more hours, and give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, I'm back. It's about 4.30 p.m., and we're definitely losing some light here, so I just wanted to quickly wrap up and let you guys know my final thoughts on all the products that I tried today. I did reapply the lipstick, and I have to say I really, really like it. It's so similar to the Maybelline Superstay. I pretty much feel like it's almost the identical thing, like the same formula, same exact scent, everything. And I find that they wear the same way, they feel the same on your lips, they have that really weightless feel. If you're a fan of the Maybelline ones, then maybe Revlon has some additional colors that you don't have in the other formula. Um, also, the CoverGirl foundation, I really like this as well. I feel like it held up pretty good. As you saw in the car, I it was wearing off my nose just a little tiny bit, and I find that most foundations wear off on my nose first anyway, so that wasn't really a big deal, but I just really like how natural this looked on my skin. It just looked like skin. So I really have enjoyed this so far and thank you guys for recommending that to me. Also, when it comes to the Revlon concealer, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite products that I tried today. I think this is just one of the nicest concealers I've tried in a really long time. It has increased on me. It really brightened up my eye area and it looked like absolutely nothing, like totally undetectable on my skin. So I highly recommend trying this one. If you like a concealer that has decent coverage, but also just looks again, exactly like skin. That's always what I'm looking for when it comes to concealers. And I really like this and I feel like it's held up really well throughout the day too. Also the 
CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen Mascara is amazing as well. It has not smudged on me now. It's been about seven hours or so, still holding up really well, and it also is still holding its curl. I was worried that they were gonna kind of fall flat a little. They haven't, so I am really impressed with this mascara as well. I'll definitely keep on using that. The NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush, I also think, is still holding up pretty good. I feel like it looks darker in here than it did in the car footage. I think just because the light was so bright out there that it tends to wash everything out. And in here, things look a little bit bolder, especially in the lower light. I feel like even the lipstick looks a little brighter than it did earlier in the day. I don't know if it's just me, but... And also, we have the eyeshadow. So these quads definitely did fade on me because they have that really similar formula to the CoverGirl ones. I feel like it's almost identical to the CoverGirl True Naked formula. So if you are a fan of that one, you'll probably like these. If you're not a fan of that, then you'll probably just want to go ahead and skip these if you happen to see them. Because to me, it has that exact same smooth, silky feel. It blends the same on your eyes. And also I feel like it fades very similar to the way those fade on me. So really that was probably my least favorite product of today, but I would say everything else was definitely a hit. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you've seen any of these out in store or with some of the older products, have you tried them already? I'd just love to hear what you're thinking and if you're planning on trying any of the products that were in today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as always. I appreciate it so, so much. And also if you're new here and you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much and I will see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.